Hello everybody, how's it going? Screezler here and I hope you're all well. And you join me today for the starting guide for the Japanese tech tree. Now starting out in War Thunder can be a bit of a daunting task. Today we will look at the nation of Japan. Like pre episodes, we will sort of take a look at the reserve tanks and chat about the best way to research the tech tree, the best way to use the vehicles, and the best sort of way to play them. Um, last episodes of France and Italy tended to lack in both, tended to sort of have more armor than the Japanese tanks. However, the Japanese tanks tend to have slightly better penetration for the gun so it's a bit of a strange sort of way of things going so we're going to start off with the I Go Co a tank we see here in glorious bush format let's just customize that and get it so it's a little bit less bushy so we can kind of see how it looks there we go the I Go Co in it, all its glory now although you look to this tank and Think of a Renault FT more or less because of the way it's designed and its shape. The Type 89 takes most of its design from the Vickers of the early 1920s. The Vickers, I think it was the six ton. Um, the tank itself was created in 1930. In game, we have the Type 89B, the second generation of this tank, which had a six cylinder diesel engine rather than a petroleum engine. The first mass-produced tank in the world to have this as a feature. Also the front plate originally was very flat and very straight uh, but in later times they sort of found out that angling it was a good idea. Again this stems to the T-34 and how it was the first ever mass-produced tank to have angled armour. No it wasn't. Um, the front plate is still a huge weak spot, however, um, but less so nowadays. The driver port does experience some of that weak spot, though, because it is very flat. Now, the driver and gunner swapped positions and swapped sides, and a stronger mus mushroom-like coupler was placed on top. And this is how you tell the Type A from the Type B. The Type A had a very sort of circ uh, sort of very circular sort of cupola on top. It wasn't this sort of mushroom style, and it also had a very flat frontal armor. Um, of course, if you look inside as well, it had a petrol engine. The Type 90 has a sorry, the Type 89 has a 57 millimeter gun. Uh, the gun was designed more to take out fortifications rather than other tanks. It is mainly designed as a uh, bunker buster this vehicle now as I said this vehicle was one of the first mass produced tanks to have a diesel engine and it, it's very interesting in that respect uh, if we look inside we can see the engine itself this lovely um, straight six cylinder diesel engine I think it was by Mitsubishi off the top of my head um, but it, it the main reason for this was there was a horrible accident in the very early days of Japanese tanking and it was in a Vickers 6 ton, um, sorry Vickers Mark 6, or was it a 6 ton, I always get those mixed up, sorry about that, um, but basically what happened is the engine caught fire and all the crew perished and Japan was like no we don't like this so what they ended up doing was using diesel engines which are less flammable so it's quite useful in that respect as it's not super flammable. The other useful thing is you do have this bit of extra protection to the sides of the fuel tanks. Um, these give you a little bit of extra protection for the engine block coming from the side and also the transmission back here will also help eat some shots occasionally. Hi, um, directing screen here and editing screen, uh, but I just wanted to add as well, the Japanese tanks also had a asbestos lining on the inside to keep their crews cool. This has made it kind of hard for the restoration and uh, ability to go inside of these tanks in modern times because they're coated with asbestos and we now know that asbestos does absolutely ruin your lungs uh, but 
it was a really neat idea and it was kind of like a very nice thing to do for the crews because they were working in such hot climates to have that asbestos lining on the inside one it provided some fire resistance to the tank so if the outside of the tank was on fire then there was less chance on the inside of getting on fire but two it also kept crews much cooler um, because it worked as an insulator and it kept the crews nice and cool anyway uh, back to the proper video now i just thought i wanted to get that one in there the tank itself has very little armour, um, and that can be problematic. And also from the side, if you shoot it in the middle here, you're going to get ammunition detonations as well. But, as I said, this was the first mass-produced diesel engine tank. It also had the sloped armour. It was one of the first sort of tanks to be produced with sloped armour. Um, again, as I say, the, the, the Type sorry, the T-34 is considered the first vehicle to have sloped armour in modern war history for tanks and it, it's absolute crap because you know look at the um look at pyramid head the Renault uh sorry the uh, FCM um again had sloped armour before the T34 you know it was quite a common thing and people knew what it was what to do with it um even Germany were looking to try and get sloped armour into production of vehicles but they couldn't because there was issues so you know, long stories anyway um let's talk a little bit about tactics of this tank so the type 89 is very average if you look up average in the, the encyclopedia of tanks no doubt the igo would be there the armor of 17 millimeters uh means small arms fire is not going to penetrate you However, only small arm, arm sorry, rifle caliber round from about a 1.792 millimeter machine gun or less is going to cause you issue. Um, the rifle caliber uh, rounds of a 50 caliber, even sometimes a 30 caliber machine gun, will rip through you like a knife through hot butter. With every other shell out there capable of penetrating this tank. Now the tank has an okay speed um, and maneuverability wise it's very okay. It does have a very strong shell but with a very low velocity which is kind of an issue. Your crew and also they're quite tightly grouped so it does cause a little issue. So if you are hit you will usually lose all of your crew in one shot you will get one shot a lot in this tank. Now, shell-wise, the Type 92 APH E round and Type 3, type 3 heat round, both shells are below 400 meters per second, so they're on the relatively slow side, and they are a bit hard to aim at far distance. The heat shell um, is probably the best to use with this tank though as the APH only has a penetration value of 21 millimeters which is not great for any tank really and the tanks you're going to be facing you're not going to have an easy time penetrating them uh, because you're not going to be facing any nation that has such weak armor um, Japan is in this strange place where it's it sort of it's got shells that can penetrate their own tanks but the shells majority of shells can't penetrate any other tanks in the game other than the aforementioned heat shell. The chemical round of heat as I said has 55 millimeters of penetration across the board um, because it's a chemical round and a heat shape charge it will basically go through at any sort of most angles and it always has the same type of um, penetration because it's not relying on impact it's relying on the chemical to go through the tank so if you I'm expecting you're going to be new to, to this so a heat round basically this one here is a shape charge and as you can see it's got a long line with a pointy bit and what this does is it's basically molten copper and when it hits the tank it it basically burns and it's designed to burn a hole through the tanks armor and what this does is once it burns itself through the armor it makes the inside of the armor very hot and melty and then causes splashes of molten metal to go everywhere inside the tank and usually will burn a few crew members and cause them mass up discomfort and usually result in fatalities or hit pieces like ammunition and because of the heat it will set the ammunition to cook off so it is a very useful round one of the issues with heat though is of 
course, it, it can be quite a narrow, narrow band going through tanks. So when you're fighting things like the LVT uh, from America, you, you'll have to do a fair few shots to kill it. One very strong point, though, is generally heat will cause a hole break on most light vehicles. To play this tank, you need to play aggressively. Try to find a spot you can sort of hit the enemy from the side with or behind. You're best as a support tank. You can't really take hits yourself. So work with a, a friend or work with some other people. Aim for the enemy turret first and aim sort of center of mass. Uh, you have a quick relo reload, so use the second uh, shot to disable the uh, sort of the rest of the tank. So take out the turret first so they can't shoot you, then disable the engine or disable the driver. And that's going to be the best way of playing this tank in general. As I said, you have to play more sort of... It, it's quite an aggressive tank to play, but you have to be very careful in it at the same time. Don't try and push forwards because your armour, as you can see, is not going to really stop anything. If we look at the protection analy analysis and go to uh, even France, who as we know, have a very poor shell for their, some of their tanks. If we look at the uh, aforementioned pyramid head, uh, the FCM, and look at its shell, the MLE 1937, it will penetrate the front of our tank. Not quite the turret sometimes, because of our angling, but the front of the tank, it will go through no problems anywhere on the front of this tank. Um, the only time you're really going to get lucky is if they kind of shoot here on the machine gun port but everywhere else is a very easy kill um, and generally you're going to lose your most of your crew one thing that is quite useful though is if you do get shot and only lose two crew members then you have spare two as well because most tanks of this era only had three to two crew members um, it was quite common to have that with four crew members you do have a little bit of extra survivability so to say now, the second tank you get as a reserve is the Key Knee, the Type 98. And again, we've pushed it up beautifully, so let's just take, let's just undress it. Da da da, da 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 da. There we go, so a nice, beautiful naked tank now in the glorious brown of the Japanese army. Um, so, the Key Knee is a successor of the Type 95 Hargo. The Type 98 Kini was designed and ready to go in about 1938. However, they did not have production started until 1942, as the military did not feel the need for a better tank at the time. Um, the the uh, Ikogo was doing very, very well in places like China um, and also Malaysia and other sort of areas where Japan, J sorry, we say Japan, where Japan was sort of pushing out towards because they didn't really have tanks of their own so they they didn't really have many anti-tank re weapons as well they had a couple of you know um, two pound cannons and things like that which could be used but there was no real anti-tank weapons they did start getting some anti-tank rifles and as soon as they came in the Japanese really felt the push and needed to upgrade their vehicles now as I said this changed when heavier weapons came in such as the 50 caliber um, and the Type 98 Kearney was a sort of very needed machine and was a bit too little too late, unfortunately. However, the tank itself is very good. Um, it's a sleek low tank with sloped welded armour. Again, T-34, uh, you don't have the sort of sloped armour metal still. This was designed before you too. Um, the, the vehicle was... Uh, was welded as well which made sort of really good benefits there were a few sections where rivets and bolts were used uh, but generally it was a welded construction um, and this is a big advantage over the ICO GO which was pretty much uh, all t rivets and rivets and bolts basically an issue with this of course is when something goes bang inside all of those rivets become bullets and go ping everywhere and kill all your, your foot soldiers the Kini however didn't have this much of its problem the turret housing uh, was uh, really nice and low too, and it carried a high velocity 37mm gun. In the back you had a V12 diesel engine, uh, giving the tank 130 uh, bhp. Despite having heavier armour, a larger engine, 
um, and sort of a slightly heavierish tank. This the Kini was about sort of in theory it should have been heavier. It was still lighter than the um, previous vehicles like the Hargo and things like that by about 300 kilograms. So it was very good in that respect. It did only have a three-man crew, so you had two in the turret and the driver, and there was no bow gunner, which was something that was a bit different, and something that was actually going to be the future of tanks, which uh, you didn't know at the time, but yeah, this was basically a very good look at what the future of tanks were going to sort of try and go at, go to. As I said, this tank was not a terrible tank. It wasn't designed poorly. It was a very good tank. Unfortunately, when it was released, it was going up against things like the Sherman. Now. The Sherman was a mediocre tank, but it was one of the better tanks of World War II. And it proved that by the fact that it had such long longevity and had so many options to go for. The Sherman was reliable, it was mass produced, it was a very good tank, but it, it sort of it wasn't the best tank, it wasn't the worst tank, it was very middle ground. But the weird thing about military history in tanks is that kind of made it the best tank overall because it was a master of nothing but it was able to do everything so if we look at the Kini again we've got a very lightly armoured tank but it does have some good armour on it now the armour is sort of slightly thinner than its predecessor but because of the sloping you get more effective armour so you've got around 20 to 25 millimetres around the tank the front is the weakest port of course for the driver and that can be a little bit problematic the turret is quite strong as well so if you go hold down you have got some sort of some strength to it and there are chances of things bouncing off of it the 37 millimetre gun is also very good because it's high velocity the type 94 APHE round uh, it's not a huge round it's a very small round because it's a 37 millimetre but it has got good penetration of 40 millimeters at 100 meters so that means you can go through pretty much every tank in game the other thing about this vehicle is it's fast it's very speedy um, it's got good takeoff because that diesel engine it's got really nice um, really nice bit of torque to it things like that so the tactics of the type 98 Kne um, the Kne is one of the sort of faster tanks as I said and this makes it great for getting a quick cap and a start to the match remember you do lack armor overall but you also have a very small turret the type 94 APHE shell has good penetration and an okay explosive filler the best way I found to use this tank is to use its speed to outflank the enemy go for side shots so you basically want to use this like a scout tank um, try and get around the enemy try and get to their sides you can cause immense damage with this tank it is very good in that respect the crew are very tight together as I said so that is a problem um, if you go through the driver's port here you're generally going to take out the full tank so that can be problematic um, but the actual vehicle is still very very strong and it does a really good job the tank is very very fast it's got a really good look of speed to it the exhaust is an interesting one as well because the way the exhaust is designed is it's designed to basically go around here and just not make a huge plume of black smoke as it takes off uh, one of the issues for a lot of tanks um, can be if we look at the Igo Co um, I don't know if that's got that exhaust as well um, I'm trying to think of a tank that does have that exhaust now uh, is generally they have exhaust pointing downwards things like that and it makes more smoke and makes everything a bit worse now the Kani and the Igoco are your your starters it used to be however that the Hargo was the was the starter now this was actually taken out of game and again we'll just we'll just make it nude um, this was originally your starter tank uh, because of the gun however it was lacking in penetration so it was removed as the vehicle but you can still get it once you unlock the rank one vehicles this will become an option and of course there is the premium variant now the premium variant is still up for sale i believe and still there um, again the gun doesn't have great penetration but you do get smoke and this tank can be very good it's the commander variant if you do start off with, with japan as your the nation that you start with with uh, testing tanks stuff like that you will find this to be a very good little premium. It, it's very nippy. It's got a um, good lack of good bit of speed to it. It's got not a great gun, but it is quite a good little tank. 
and armor wise it has got some very good sort of slope to armor again t34 looking at you and all your lies um so it can deflect a few shots from some other nations okay next up we're going to go to some gameplay so here we are in a replay with the kini um now the kini as i said is one of the better flankers around this br now luckily as well you're always going to be on the uh, access team generally so you're always going to be sort of coexisting with things like the panzer to uh, the Panzer II and the Panzer III C, sorry, III B, Panzer II C, and the uh, M13s, which are tanks that will cause you problems if you go up against them. Sorry, I'm a very windy day here in Australia, and my notepad's getting fucked around. Um, so you will face these vehicles that are quite strong. Um, so you have to sort of be a little bit careful in the way you, you work it. So the, the Kenny, you know, you might as well take out sort of sort of full ammunition with it um, simply just because it's the ammunition is so small you can see here the ammunition section down here this is pretty much 50 rounds of ammunition not completely full but almost full if you're gonna get hit you're gonna you're gonna go out anyway so we're using the binoculars right now we can see there's a couple of tanks across the river we're just gonna try and get up to sea as quickly as possible but we're going to use the bushes so this is where this tank is very good is using it in brush and sort of sections where you can hide the tank now we're on our beautiful snow camouflage as well um, but the japanese snow camouflage is actually quite good because the color pattern generally will let you blend in a little bit with most things so we're going to come up here and try and get to the side of the uh the cap we know there's people in the cap circle so we're just going to slow down a little bit here and creep up and there is just checking around the surroundings keeping an eye on things of course this is a realistic battle mode so we've got to make sure that the uh, flanks are sort of safe you don't get the name tags in this mode what i generally suggest though is if you are new and if you are starting out in war thunder go to the arcade first of all and just get used to the arcade gameplay because once you've got that section sort of set up then you can head to realistic battle and it's much easier now the M2A4s are going to be the biggest challenges you're going to face sometimes because they're very very strong and they've got very good frontal armour. On a side shot here we take the engine out straight away. Now we're going to aim for the midsection. Um, another hit on the engine, we damage the gunner. Another shot, we take, take out some of the, the engine. Finally we take out the whole tank. But we now have an armoured car in front of us so we've just got to be really careful here. Trying to spot him and just trying to see him so this could be a point where we you know we, we're going to go down now armored cars are very dangerous because they're very fast maneuverable and they've got very good guns but try to spot him there he is we take the shot we go through the engine his gun is still up but we managed to knock the crew out so we get very lucky there that could have been a very dangerous vehicle now the worst vehicle you're going to come up against is the lvt and that's over in the spawn at the moment the LVT is a landing vehicle, basically it's a landing craft boat kind of tank thing and it is very strong because it's so big and has so little armour so you're generally going to over penetrate it and you're always going to sort of find that you sort of you need to knock out about 400 crew members now just we've poked our nose in the cap there, it's just got capped now we're going to try and find a spot that's safe so this flank is pretty well locked down so we just need to find a spot where we can sort of press home the advantage now and keep the enemy at bay now this was done with a couple of squad mates uh, on stream the other night so if you are interested to see some sort of early tier Japanese gameplay um, check out one of my previous videos uh, Japanese um, uh, Japanese capture stream I think I named it um, I'll put I'll put it in the uh, in the suggested videos at the end because it is very useful and it's uh, basically going to give a bit more insight into the vehicles you're going to see a little bit more detail and how to play them things like that uh, so it should hopefully help you out a little bit so right now we're getting very close to their spawn and getting very close to some sort of dangerous areas now there's rocks over on this side where people will snipe from so we're going to try and get to a position where we can take them out we're going to crawl through here and we're just going to use our speed to our advantage as you can see we're getting very good speed here up to 20 miles per hour per hour per hour down the hill 
So now we want to try and get out, get the tanks knocked out on the other side of the river. So we switch binoculars, just check around. Now we're going to put ourselves in this position, which is a good little spot for just uh, flanking. And you can sort of see the camouflage palette working with us now with the stone, because we can sort of sit here rather well. Now there's a T26 coming up the hill, we take him out straight away. Now we're just going to watch out for the sides because it could be that we're spotted and if we are spotted we're in a bit of a dangerous position here. Now we know we've got teammates to the, to the side of us and they're taking out some of the enemies as they come up the hill there. But now it's just a case of trying to work out where to shoot next. So keeping an eye on things. Um, you can see that people on the hill who've not really got camouflage or got these safe spots are struggling because they're getting taken out pretty quickly. Um, but we're just going to try and sit here for a little bit and try and defend the B cap and also defend this little bit of an incline. Now the Kenny has a very good little bit of depression to the gun as well which is a really additional bonus to this weapon. The depression of the gun really helps you work ridge lines Sorry, I'm a very dry, dry map today. Um, it really helps you work bridge lines and really helps you in attacking the enemy vehicles. Now we can see a, a, a Renault FCM. Sorry, no, an FCM there. So I always call it a Renault for some reason, which makes no sense because it's not. It's an FCM. Um, keeping an eye on to the left of us, uh, but we're mainly keeping an eye on the right hand side. So we're sort of just, just sort of sitting here camping now, just, just getting ready for any attacks and really just keeping ourselves so we can spot the enemy but also we can attack them if need be. Now as an M2A4, and again as I said, that's probably one of the most dangerous tanks we're going to face uh, other than the LVT, just because the M2A4s are very, very strong. Um, they've got very strong front plate armour which will basically negate our shot from certain distances. One real big advantage of this tank is the high velocity gun, which makes the gun usage very easy. It's very it's very easy to use this gun. It's very simple, it's very basic, but it's very strong. And you'll see when we go into the gun view in a few moments, you can see that the actual drop of the round is not great. So you've got a uh, you've got a very good round that's going to go a distance and hold up its position. So we're still just sitting here, just trying to keep an eye on things. The M2A4 is still over there, but we can't really see it at the moment because trees are in the way. So we're just going to go back. We're watching where people are shooting as well. Now, we just head over to my teammate, Wendell, who is in the IGO Co. And again, the IGO Co is very dangerous. And this is where team play can work out very well because I'm spotting from the left hand side, so, sorry, from the other side of the river. So I can let my teammates know where the enemy are as much as I can, as what I can see. Um, now the IGO Co, as I said, is a lot slower. Uh, it's still not sluggish though, even though it does look like a slug. Uh, it's got a good look of speed to it, but it can get to places quite well. And you generally want to use it to sort of flank the enemy. You don't really want to go fighting head on, because that's where you're going to start struggling. So Weddell's going to come around here and there is a couple of tanks sort of spotted around the B section um, that, that are currently firing at me as well. So if you see here we're getting shot, we're shooting out to the M2A4. And now Wendell has seen somebody and takes a shot and gets the kill on the FCM36. And that tank can be very nasty against some rounds because as I said it's very hard to penetrate them because of the uh, because of their uh, their armour. Now I just take out the M2A4, so that's some good news there. So one less worry, one less problem. Wendell's going to come in and just recap this zone now. So we'll just jump to my position once more. And as you can see, I'm taking a lot of enemy fire because they know I'm here. But I can also see over here that there's an H39. So letting Wendell know that there is that tank there. I get hit and now have to repair and tell Wendell where the tank is. Now it's hitting me in such a spot that it's a little bit hard to go through my armour but it is hitting my, my engine constantly. But you'll notice my engine isn't catching on fire and that's one of the beauties about the diesel engine. So Wendell's just trying to get around here to take the shot. 
think get something into the H39, which means that it's no longer looking at me. But again, I can give the uh, give the details to Wendell. And working as a team here, we're going to try our best to take it out. But then a BT-7 comes from nowhere and unfortunately takes Wendell out. So repairing my engine currently, the uh, the H-39 I think has been taken out. Yep, the H-39 was taken out, so that has been useful. But now there's, sorry, the H-39 is still there. So we take a shot, we hit the track unfortunately. And then I'm going to try and take another shot, we miss it. And then there's a BT-7. Now the BT-7 is going to be our prime target because we can actually penetrate that. The H-39 takes another shot into our engine. But again, we don't get fire because of that beautiful diesel engine. And this is one of the real big advantages of Japanese tanks that people just forget about. Because the diesel engine really does help out a lot. And it makes a big difference for the actual tank. Um, because it's just a lot less flammable. Now, I'm going to keep an eye for this BT-7. And watch it as it comes through. Now it's coming through. We take the shot. And... We unfortunately hit the wheel on the track. It's coming around the corner. Take another shot, this time a little bit better. Take out the commander, I think it is. Take our last shot, and we both shoot at the same time, killing each other. So, sort of a, a, a double kill there, like a way of the samurai. And that's basically the match over with. So, that was a bit of an idea about how the gameplay goes for this tank. So back in the garage here, and as I said, the Kini there, we had five kills with it, very good games. Um, uh, this tank is a very good tank, it is very useful, and it has some very good abilities to it. it it's such a versatile little machine. This used to be a 1.3 vehicle as well, so it's actually gone down a bit in BR because it's become the new reserve. And being that, it's... A very very handy tank it's almost like the m22 locust for america it's very fast very agile not great gun not great protection but it's good at getting a flank and when it does get in a good position it's very handy and as i said with the diesel engine in the back it has less chance of catching on fire which is a really big help because as you saw we took quite a few hits to the engine block there we didn't get set on fire once which is one of the rarer things in War Thunder, because you will see petrol engines just got instantly. So, the Japanese tech tree itself, let's take a look at the tech tree. Planes are going to come later, don't worry. Um, but, you start off with the Kini and Aiko Ko. Once you, I think it's once you get to rank 2, you'll be able to unlock the Hago, which is the old reserve tank. Now, the Ho-Ro is an interesting vehicle, because it's a big 150mm howitzer. Now, this thing is just a complete derp gun. Um, as you can see, 150mm is a, a huge gun, um, about the same size as one of the crewman's heads. And modification-wise, no real modifications. You're best off using the HE round, which has about 137mm of penetration. Um, sorry, the HE round, 65mm of penetration. The APHE round is not really worth it, because it's such a low velocity, it just blops. And it's kind of not worth it. Um, the HE round has got more penetration power and also more explosive filler so it's going to be going to knock out a tank in one shot and this thing will actually take out um, take out things like the Abrams and stuff like that without any trouble because it is just such a big gun that can be a useful tank to unlock first however the Chai Ha and Chai Ha Kei are really good tanks to get the Chai Ha Kei is more like the later tanks you'll get in the it's basically you start to see the actual shape of the Japanese tanks here, and this is things like the Hargo. Um, the sorry, I've just completely forgotten the no, no, Chinu. Sorry, the Chinu, Chato, um, Chaihi, things like that. You start seeing that sort of design on the tank, and the Chaihake is basically the Chinu, uh, sort of Chaito sort of looking vehicle, and it's got a decent gun on it, the 47 millimeter Type One is the same as on the um, doo -doo -doo. 
trying to think now. No, it's, it, there is a similar gun somewhere around somewhere around the Japanese tech tree, uh, but getting these tanks unlocked is quite useful. The Kaimi is not really worth using. It's a bit of a fun tank. It's a bit silly. Um, it's an interesting vehicle, uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't have its pontoons, so it doesn't swim. Uh, because this is actually a tank that was designed to go through water, it had two pontoons, one on the back, one on the front. Um, uh, you can see the actual clips there on the front of it, these little pincers, and then on the back there are the same little pincers. And uh, the actual line here, you can see this little um, circular thing here. This was designed because the, uh, the, the driver would basically thread a cable through the actual tank and it would come across here, come across the top, go through this hoop and then go down to the rudder at the end of the bon boat pontoons. Um, so yeah, it, it's a really interesting quirky vehicle but it has no armour and the gun isn't that great so it's a very boxy tank, very big tank so it's easy to get taken out. One of the few advantages though is it is quite wide so sometimes people will shoot you in the sides here and miss your crew um, but your crew are very tightly cramped together as well so it's not great to take out it is just a bit of an interesting vehicle the main tanks to work towards is the Honey the Honey is a very good tank with the 75mm Type 90 cannon um, the Type 90 is uh, just the prior version to the Type 3 I think off the top of my head um, but the main things with this is the gun has great penetration so as you can see here, almost 100 millimeters at 100 meters. This thing is one of the most. These guns have got great. The Japanese 75 millimeters are some of the best guns in game, and I don't care what people say, they are one of the best guns in game. And as soon as you get to things like the Chinu, Chito, Chito Late, you start getting the um, Type 3 and Type 2 cannon, and these cannons are some of the best. Well, it is, in my mind, the best 75mm in-game. Uh, it has great penetration. As you can see, 142mm, 129mm at long range. And then you get the Koi, which is a slightly upgraded version, which has more TNT filler. So these things will take out pretty much anything. They are very good vehicles. These are the sort of tanks you want to work towards, along with the M24 and the Sherman 76. One of the big disadvantages for the Japanese tech tree is its AAA. Um, the Type 94, the, the Type 94, the Tase, and the Soki all have the same gun. Um, the only difference is the Soki gets uh, two of them. The Tase is pretty much useless. Um, it, it's it's not great. It, the 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 20mm has got a very low clip as well. You have got some sort of armour piercing rounds to it, but they're not the best in game. The speed of the vehicle is not great either. The Soki is a little bit better with the twin guns, but the clip size is very small as well. Um, so if we look at the customization of this vehicle, you can see the clips here, and it's a I think it's a 20 round clip off the top of my head. It it, it goes very quickly. So two or three bursts and you've used up your entire ammunition. Also your gunner is extremely exposed. Luckily though as you see you have got the commander who's down here in the actual vehicle who has got a little bit of protection to him so you won't die in one hit usually but this vehicle is extremely exposed, extremely useless but one of the useful interesting fun facts is it was designed to actually go on the rails and um, this and the task they were designed to to be railway vehicles um, so kind of interesting cool stuff as well um, they could actually be converted to run on train tracks and they were used in that respect the uh, so key is one of the most common in that respect then you get the M42 Duster which is one of my least favorite triple in game the 40 millimeter both as cannons are okay but they're very slow firing not that great and at 6.7 you've got You've got jets in game, you've got things like that where the turret rotation is not really fast enough to catch them. Once you get to the Type 87 however, you've got a fantastic AAA with radar. And this thing is absolutely deadly, this thing is a very very useful gun. So it's not all doom and gloom. The biggest problem for, Jap for the Japanese tech tree is sort of the 2.0, sorry the rank, the rank 1, 2 climb. 
once you get to this sort of area, the sort of 4.3 area, you're starting to have some very good vehicles. The Nato is also a vehicle I would recommend getting soon. Very, very useful. Um, it's, uh, jokingly, I will say it's the vehicle that the um, Israelis used to base off the uh, Magach uh, tank because it basically has the armor of the engine block in the way so it uses the transmission and engine block as armor um, it hasn't really got any other armor to speak of it's very lightly armored but the thing is this thing's got a great gun it's not got great depression but the gun is very very good and at 3.3 this thing is an absolute monster it will kill any tank you come up against uh, it, it will kill any tank you come up against up to around about the sort of 5.3 5.7 area of tanks where you start getting some really heavy beasts uh, but this thing is a very, very useful vehicle. The further you go down, um, the home reproduction again is very useful. This thing is actually very well armoured. Uh, it's kind of the Japanese, um, the, the Japanese elephant, kind of say, the, the, the uh, third nand, that's it. Um, it's the Japanese third nand, so to say. This thing is very well armoured. It does have a few weak points, but it is very good. Um, the STAs are not great, but they do have a very good round once you unlock it, which is the Heat FS round. The Heat FS on it is pretty deadly, um, which is more than enough for most vehicles at its BR. The Type 61 is not great, it's not bad, but it's um, it, it, these are sort of the tanks Japan was making after the war kind of thing. These were your sort of 1960s, 50s tanks they weren't that strong they, you can see where the designs come off as well they they're very much designed after the american vehicles um it's not a terrible tank but it's not a very good tank if that makes sense it, it it's it can be good in the right hands but it's not going to be something that you go oh wow this is amazing same goes for the type 60 which has twin recoilless rifles it's kind of like the uh, fiat cars um, it's very fast, it's got those recoilless rifles, it's very good. You also have the Walker Bulldog. Um, the Type 60 anti-tank guided missile is worthless. Um, it's one of the worst HDMs in game just because it has such low velocity rockets and it suffers for that. However, the Type 89 is a very good uh, fighting vehicle, infantry fighting vehicle, and is worth getting, uh, especially now the re research cost has gone down so much. Your main glory for Japan though is this, the STB. The STB was a prototype of the Type 74. At 7.7 .7, this thing is very overpowered. Um, it's got the L7A3 gun in it, the the great British gun with the arm piercing discarding Savo shell for a standard shell, um, with great penetration and great um, accuracy, but the heat shell is just glorious, very fast, very good, very accurate. This tank is really, really good. Um, it's a very, very handy tank to have, and it also has the hydropneumatic suspension that starts to come into play as well. This tank is really underestimated, and it is one of the, the best 7.7 .7 tanks out there. It's got pretty much the speed and agility of a Leopard, all the firepower of those Leopards, um, then Centurion, the Chieftains, um, because the chieftains don't get heat FS, it's kind of got a more powerful gun than those. It is a very, very good 7.7 .7 tank. In my opinion, it is the best 7.7 .7 tank out there. Then you get the Type 74. At 8.7, .7 it is a little bit over tiered, but it can match up. This thing can fight Abrams with no trouble at all. This tank, you also get the premium of the Type 74 G Kai. Um, there is a little bit of debate in the community because this Type 74 that we actually get in game has got some of the same modifications as the GKI, um, but we won't get into that. The GKI is just a slightly better version. It's if you're going to get a premium, that or the Type the, the number six heavy are probably the best to get. The Chinu 2 is also a very handy one, but the Type 74G is a really really good tank. If you're going to buy a top tier premium, this is the one that is worth paying out for. Um, the Type 74 itself is really good. As I said, it's got the hydro pneumatic suspension. And then we come to the Type 90, of course, the top tank. And the Type 90 is just an absolute beast. Still one of the best MBTs in game. Um, it's it it's up there with the Abrams um, and the Challengers. 
Um, it, it's got very good armor, as you can see, it's got very good composite armor on it. It's very strong, it's got very good armor, it's got a very fast reloading gun. Um, again, if we look inside, it has a um, sort of auto loading system for the gun. Um, it's very very quick this thing is just extremely good um, firepower is fantastic you have a three man crew which is not great but that's really the only disadvantage of this and that's really the end of the Japanese tech tree um, it's it's tricky at times there are some BRs that are just hideous um, and there are some awful awful pro, uh, uh, premium vehicles the Type 75, for instance, is one of the most useless premiums in game. Um, there are some good premiums as well. Pretty much every premium down the Japanese tech tree, other than the Rank 1, Rank 2, and of course the Type 75, is well worth purchasing. The Hori prototype, is, again, is extremely strong. 6.0 as well. It's a little bit less BR. It has a little bit less armor, but it has the same gun. Um, it's very, very good. And again your sort of 7.0 lineup can be very strong but type 61 in, for instance um, you can take out the uh, the ATGM vehicle it can have uses sometimes but it is pretty useless overall though the Japanese tech tree is one of the more interesting ones out there because there's lots of vehicles that are theoretically paper tanks um, the Chiri for instance is one of those paper tanks but it is also a 5.0 tank with an auto reloader. Now it doesn't have like an auto reloader we know because it still involves a loader but what happens is you've got this system where the loader puts it on the tray once you fire one the second piece will come down so it's extremely quick firing um, the reload rate of 4.3 seconds on it is just ludicrously fast and that's where it comes into use. It also has a 37mm cannon as a secondary this thing is almost like a a bit like a mouse with its two guns um, but it doesn't have the armor unfortunately it's okay armor but at the BR of 5.0 almost everything's going to over penetrate you it can be a little trolly sometimes the other issue is because the tank is so tall it's hard to hide but it's still quite fun and if you get it in the right circumstances this tank can be an absolute monster You've got some very unique tanks, as I say. Um, a lot of the tanks we play with, such as the Chai Tos and the Chai Rees, are not battle proven. You know, uh, uh, pretty much the only tanks that are battle proven are things like the uh, Chai He, um, Tasse, a lot of the lower BR tanks, and of course, you know, the, sh the American vehicles. Um, Japan simply couldn't produce their vehicles most of these vehicles had one or two vehicles made um, with the Chai Tos there were quite a few made um, but they were all to defend the homeland so a lot of them don't have that battle proving to them but they are extremely good vehicles and they're extremely fun to play okay I hope you found this guide a little bit interesting and useful if you have please let me know below in the comments um, thank you ever so much for watching next up will be uh, branch of Great Britain. Yes, the British tanks. So Britain is coming next. I hope you look forward to that and I hope this has helped out anyone that's looking to start their, their journey through the Japanese tank line. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.